What's going on YouTube? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is Triple T Terminal Tip Tuesday. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a backup bootable drive on your Macintosh OS X operating system. Now, as many of us know, backup is very important. If you don't know this, let me tell you the three rules to backup. Backup, backup, and backup. In all seriousness, backup is really something that everyone needs to do. And I give you two recommendations for backing up. The first one is backup to two different locations. This sounds daunting and it sounds horrible, but let's say I have two different backed up drives and they're sitting on that desk. Well, if the inside or the internal hard drive on my computer went bad, that's perfect. I plug in the backup and I'm ready to go. But let's say my house burned down those hard drives and those backups are burned down. Where's the backups of your backup? So as you can see, this is a very unlikely situation, but it does happen. And when it does, it freaking sucks. So I recommend backing up in two different locations. I pay five bucks a month to back up to carbonite.com every month. Um, or actually it's every week on Sunday, my entire computer uploads it every single file from the hard drive onto Carbonite. So in the rare occurrence that my house did burn down or that both of my backup drives went bad, I would have a backup to fall on. Like I said, you want it in two different places. So if one goes bad, the other one's there. Oh, shit, I just flipped you guys off. The other one is there to save you. Now, um, yeah. So what I'm gonna show you how to do now is to back up using Terminal. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, Quinn, why would I wanna use Terminal? There's so many great utilities like Super Duper and uh, Time Machine. This is true and they work fine. I love Super Duper, I was a religious Super Duper user, but the issue with Super Duper and many of these other applications is A, it's shareware. Super Duper worked under a free license, but the problem with it was I often experienced administrative problems. I experienced backup problems. It wasn't as fast as it could have been. It was a little bit resource consuming so I couldn't really do anything else other than backup and it just wasn't the most enjoyable experience so even though this terminal command is a little bit daunting in the fact that you have to do it manually you're gonna have to commit to yourself okay every Sunday every night I'm gonna enter this terminal command and it's gonna back up unless of course you create an automator script in which case that would be supremely cool but let's be honest not everyone's that sweet I'm gonna have to do that now that I think of that but Basically what we're gonna be doing is showing you how to back up your whole computer to a backup drive. So if in the rare occurrence, the internal computer uh, or the internal hard drive on your computer went bad or your computer got stolen, you have all your files on an external hard drive. Now, Time Machine, as many people use, don't recommend it, never have, probably never will because it doesn't create a bootable backup. It has a bunch of files and that's great, that's fine, but you don't get your actual operating system. If your computer goes bad, yeah, you might have had your assignment from three weeks ago, but you don't have every single application file, you don't have all the widgets that were running, you know, you still lose a ton of data. And so using Terminal, we can ensure that we do get a complete backup. Now, what you're going to need to do is to open Terminal. If you don't know how to open Terminal, we're already off to a bad start. No, I'm just kidding. You're gonna to wanna to do a Terminal search in Spotlight, or you can navigate to your Applications folder, and under the Utilities folder, you'll find Terminal. You're gonna open it and paste this command. This command is right below in the lower third, so you can, um, you can paste that in. But before you execute the command, what you're going to need to do is change the drive and the folder partition. This is just placeholder text. And we do need to specify to, uh, to terminal where to save all this information. So we are going to save to backup and backup is where I have backed up all my files. This is where I have do my magic. Now on backup, I have two different Excuse me, I have this Western Digital My Passport one terabyte drive. Now it has two partitions. It has an external storage partition, which is the majority of my drive, which houses my iTunes music and all that other crap. And uh, this backup folder is dedicated to backup. Now, what I would recommend is that you dedicate a whole hard drive to backup. But if you can't afford that like me, then you can create a partition under your existing hard drive. That works fine. Just make sure that you know how to create a partition correctly and make it a Mac OS journal extended uh, hard drive partition so that you can boot from it. After I've said all that, you're going to be like, what? Don't worry. It's very easy once you've done that. So as you can see, the name of this drive is called backup and we're going to then after volumes place backup. Yours may not be called backup. It may be called uh, WD My Disk or hard drive or blah, 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 or whatever. You're just going to need to paste the name of that hard drive. And then 
after this, you can specify a folder. So if I want to, cr to create a folder from within this, or maybe I didn't want to create a partition, I could go into my external storage folder and then create a backup from there. But the issue with that is it isn't truly bootable. So I would recommend that you back up all your files to the root of a partition. So what we're going to do here, and this is already um, collided with stuff because there are already um, a lot of backups that are on um, this backup folder. So we're just going to override them with terminal, but um, we're gonna, just going to say, okay, just upload it to the root of backup. We don't want to stick it in a folder or all that other good stuff. So if something does go wrong, it's easily bootable. That's what I'd recommend you do. So you're going to press return and it's going to ask you for your password because you are executing a pseudo command. This means you're running as under the administrator and you're accessing files that can't be accessed unless you give it administrator uh, permission. So don't worry, go ahead and enter your admin password on your computer and it will begin to update. Now it's going to begin building the file list. This will take a little while depending on how many files you have. I have just over a million files. So it takes a little bit of time to accumulate all these files and figure out, okay, this is what we're doing. And uh, then it begins to transfer them. Backups can take hours and it really depends on how much data you have on your hard drive, what hard drive you're backing up to, the speed of that, whether you're on Firewire versus USB, all that other logistical crap we don't need to worry about. But it will take a while. The good thing is, as you can see here, well, I'm screen capturing, so it doesn't really count but I'm not using a ton of resources. Sudo is using about 20% of my processor's power and um, super duper was consuming about 150. So as you can see, it's a lot more time consuming. It, wow, as you can see, it's a lot more resource, a lot less resource consuming when we use sudo uh, under terminal. And it also, I thought faster. So, um, you know, it, it is a very easy and good way to do it and it's absolutely free. So let's say, crap, we lost our files, we lost our hard drive, our internal hard drive on our MacBook is gone to crap, or maybe our MacBook got stolen. Whatever, we have our backup, this has been already done, this has been created, how do I boot from this hard drive? What you're going to need to do is take your computer and you are going to hold down, well, you won't hold it, you'll press the boot key. You'll press the power button. Um, if it's already launched in something like this or you're running an environment, you can restart your computer. And when it restarts before the Apple logo gets displayed, you're going to hold down the option key. And this will allow you to select the startup disk. Now, by default, the internal disk is selected as the startup disk. You could completely run your computer off of a hard drive sitting next to it as long as you specify, okay, make this the startup disk. So when you go to startup disk, that's basically what you're going to tell it to do. And the same holds true for when you're using bootcamp or one of those other um, partitioned hard drive pieces. But what we're gonna say is when we boot into this, we're gonna plug our hard drive into the USB port we hold the power button, we hold option, and then it's going to say, okay, what do you want to boot from? You'll use the arrow keys and navigate to not the internal hard drive on your computer, which is by default Macintosh hard drive. I've changed mine to OS 10, but you'll say, I want to back up or I want to boot from backup. Then backup will physically boot. Your computer will boot from this hard drive and you'll be able to boot from your backup. If anything did happen to go wrong to your internal drive. Um, so it is very easy to do. It doesn't take much work. It is a little bit confusing at first, but terminal isn't something that should be too intimidating. It is pretty easy to use once you get your way around it. So like I said, that's how you do it. It will take a couple hours to do the process it's doing, but it is actually working and it does a very good job. So this is Quinn. That's Nazi iPhone guy. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe, rate, and comment. Uh, use that hard drive to create backups. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.